Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today I'm going to walk you through the process to swap out the boots on a CV joint. This particular one came off a 2011 Polaris Ranger 800 Crew. It's going to be similar to just about every single CV joint out there, so the process is pretty much going to be the same. And what we're going to be using is a kit that addresses both the inboard and the outboard side of the CV joint. Now inside each kit, what you're going to find is the boot, the clamps, and the grease necessary to repack the joint once you get it cleaned out. Now this particular one has been split open for a long time, so there's going to be a lot of debris that needs to be cleaned out before we can evaluate the joint itself and then see if we can repack it and then put that new boot on. We want to start off by just carrying it over to the parts washer, getting it cleaned up. I'll bring it back to the table and then I'll show you how to break it down and get these boots installed. So let's go. I've got it cleaned up reasonably well. The boot that needs to be replaced on this particular axle is actually the inboard side. Now on some manufacturers you'll find that the shaft cannot be removed from the inner CV joint itself. You can only remove the outer one. Instead of having this type of ring on both ends, on the inside it actually has the circlip and there's no way you're going to drive past that. With the Polaris from this particular model, you can actually take it off either end. But I want to caution you here because this came off of that unit. Guess what? That is not actually a Polaris CV axle. Now what really gave this one away? Look at this. See the difference? That was just one telltale sign that something's not right here. Look how many ridges there are compared to what this axle has. Where did this one come from? I have no idea. It has no markings on it. At some point in time in this vehicle's history, somebody took off the factory ones and replaced them with aftermarket. So that being said, you need to be careful of what you're working on because somebody may have replaced of what you think is going to be an OEM part with something aftermarket and it's not going to be put together the same way as the factory image. So let's start by taking off our clamps. Now this one actually has both types on it. It has the type that where you squeeze it together and it makes this little mushroom cap, but it also has this type that's actually reusable. You can grab it with your pliers here and here, pull those together, and that releases the teeth over on the far end. So now we can press it together, and then bingo, she pops right off. Not that we're gonna reuse this one, but if we needed to, we could. Plan B, you may have to get a little bit more aggressive, same pair of pliers, just grab it from the side and pull it off. Now for the inner, there is no other choice but to actually break it off. Same pliers, grab it, work it back and forth till she snaps loose. There she goes. One more and then all our clamps will be off. Now what we're going to do is pull the outside boot back. We're going to clean off some of this grease. The real name of the game here is to keep everything just as clean as you can. Get as much as the old grease out as you can. That way we put in nice new grease that won't have any contaminants in it. Put it in the vise. Use a drift and hit it on the very inside and that will release this joint. And what we're aiming for is right inside here. We want to use the drift or the punch on this area only because we want the actual joint to stay together because it's already developed a wear pattern inside and we don't want to disturb that. There we go. That's exactly what we wanted. Now all we need to do is remove your outside boot, then this offending inside boot. Now if it's had a cut for a long time and there's a lot of dirt and debris inside, it's pretty much going to be game over um, because the damage is done. 
This one is in good shape. It hasn't been cut that long. What we're gonna do is clean out as much of the grease as possible, get our boots in position, get this inner CV joint pushed back on. All we need to do is get everything on the shaft before we put this on because these are designed just to slide on and then get crimped into position. You'd have a tough time trying to get this apart to put it on after the fact. You can put on the larger ones after the fact. So we've got that on. Go and get our second boot on. We're gonna put this back in the clamp. Then you just line it up onto here. Make sure that that ring is centered and still in the groove. And then a couple of taps with a soft flow hammer should put this back into position. And that's it. Next, we just need to fill in with the grease. Get some in the boot, some directly into the joint. Now just bring up our boot over our joint. Same thing with the grease on the inboard side. Now all we need to do is crimp the clamps. Now the tool you'll need to do this actually grabs it, pulls it together, and pushes it down. So you need to make sure you'll pick up one of these when you're working with this style clamp. This is the fun part, actually. We'll go ahead and do the inboard side since we're down on this end. Make sure you're lined up when you do this because there's no going back once you crimp it. One more. All right, guys, there you go. Not that tough to do, just need to have a couple of special tools and then you can do your own repairs instead of taking them to the dealership. Well listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com where we can get you taken care of. Have any questions or comments? Leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.